Hello, dear educators. Welcome to Discuss Education, powered by Linways. Discuss Education is an initiative to unite educators from different parts of the nation. We conduct events, webinars, and interviews with eminent personalities from the education world, all with a simple aim to inspire and motivate educators to do more. Today, in Discuss Education, we are honored with the presence of an eminent personality. We have with us a great educationist and a chief School Excellence of the Bharati Foundation, Mr. Anthony Melishwistar. He is an educationist with more than 23 years of experience and a certified coach. He started his career as a teacher at Don Bosco School in Jaji Shiksha Kendra, Bhopal. He played a key role in introducing research-based monitoring indicators and building the capacity of the CRT and district education officials for research and training. He worked in UNICEF to implement the quality package in Madhya Pradesh as an area representative for North India for Sai Savers International. He established its IK program. He has organized thematic workshops for national and state level education officials. He co-authored the book, The Skills Edge, a book for promoting skills approach in school education. Above all, he is passionate about education and is a great educationist. We believe educators can learn a lot and find the inspiration they need from him. We are extremely happy to have you with us, sir. Welcome to Discuss Education. Thank you. Thank you for inviting into this discussion forum. It's always a pleasure to talk to the, you know, interact with the educationist in, in the network. So I'm sure it is a great, great learning experience uh, also for me in this particular interaction. Great, sir. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for calling me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Today, this is a specialty. We have a special host today. Uh, let me welcome the man behind Linways, the CEO of uh, Linways Technologies, and an enterprise embarked on a mission to empower educators, inspire learners, and change the future. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Discuss Education. Thank you. Thank you, Adesh. So, so we can start the discussion, uh, sir. So, uh, the stage is all yours, Vasim. Please. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you for being with us, sir. Thank, so, thank you, thank you for the inviting me into this program. <laughs> okay, sir. So let's start with the discussion. So we can. Okay. So my first question is: You are a well-traveled person who crossed different states, nations, and cultures. Have this experience made any differences to the way you view the Indian education system? Because always the experiences you had an opportunity to meet lots of educationists uh, in your experience in your traveling. So what made you, what, what differences you, I mean, in your career or in your, as an educationist, you got from this experience? Actually, uh, travel is the best form of education. In fact, you are not only able to see new places, you are able to experience new culture. And in the way I have traveled to various states in the country and even outside the country, it has been mostly with a focus of, uh, you know, interaction with the various educationists in the respective places. And so there's a lot of learning experiences that you learn from you now within the country and outside the country. So if I can give you an example of how things can go, there may be some examples of good practices that are happening in uh, the state of Odisha. So when we go and discuss with the Himachal Pradesh or uh, in any other states in the country where you're traveling to, always that learning comes with you and you are able to share that particular learning to the new state. When we go uh, to you know, various other countries, always there are good practices that comes back to India and contextualize it. There are a lot of good things happening in our country. In fact, uh, in, uh, while I was working with Save the Children, we have published a research report where good practices of uh, the national, uh, national level, all the various states in our country. We also uh, presented uh, it's in, in the same organization, uh, another report, international good practices. Uh, when you look at the education system, it has been an evolving uh, sector. It has been quite dynamic in its approach. So whether we learn from our own country, our own states, or the countries nearby, whether it is Europe or American countries or Australia, we have traveled to various places along with the government officials to take the good practices. And many of those good practices have been integrated into the education system in the country. One of the things which I feel proud of uh, is our uh, project with uh, Save the Children in terms of technical cooperation fund supported by the uh, commission. Uh, and in that, uh, that is a project that has led country into thinking of school leadership in the public 
system earlier there were many various agencies working in the area of school leadership training many people into the leadership uh, area but i think it is that project brought uh, school leadership as a focus into the system into the into the dna of our uh, education system especially sarva shiksha abhiyan uh, which was uh, progressing that time apart from getting this particular aspect of uh, making systemic changes transforming uh, you know helping to transform education uh, it has also helped me to uh, integrate many of those learnings wherever I'm, wherever i am working so the place where i am presently working as chief school excellence in bharti foundation all those good practices are integrated into the program i always uh, uh, promote student leadership as a focus that's something which i pick from uh, the leader in me from uh, stephen covey uh, the program so there are various other things uh, one of the things which i have uh, integrated into our program is what i picked up from uh, australia melbourne uh, in one of our visits we find uh, uh, textbooks are not that important in that country what is important is the learning part of it so for that uh, especially at the lower level say primary level if you compare our uh, schooling system pre primary class 1 2 3 4 5 that primary level uh, textbook is not very important what is important is the students learn the reading writing speaking the basic literacy and numerical skills so if we are able to promote that even through a use of library book story book not only that you are in you know instilling a good habit of reading among the children but also you are trying to improve all the foundational literacy and numeracy skills which are national education policy now stresses flm as they call it it's very important to ensure literacy and numeracy skill otherwise uh, various reports are coming uh, in the last few years uh, some of our students in class 8 are not, not able to read class 2 syllabus or class 5 syllabus or class 5 students not able to read the textbook of class 2 and 3 why it is happening because we are not focusing on foundation literacy and numeracy skills we are so much caught up with textbooks and you know the knowledge part of it rather than the skills part of it so this travel has helped me to integrate some of the good practices and not just cut copy paste because cut copy paste it's not going to help it's only going to make things worse so we need to take it uh, uh, you know how we are able to contextualize in our present circumstances and then how we are able to get those skills approach into our system is the main focus that has been in my career oh thanks sir actually it was a uh, beautiful insights uh, so my next next question is related to the teaching Uh, we know teachers have the power to mold each student's life uh, because how can a teacher nurture a mindset in them to understand this purpose because uh, we know that teaching is a divine job because they are molding the future in front of in front of them so how they can build them nurture a mindset in them uh, for this particular divine job yes i perfectly agree with what you're saying teaching is a noble job it's a divine job and even in our own ancient history guru shiksha bad so gurukul it started you know looking at teacher as a guru as a person whom you need to look up to and so we had initially disciples so there is a guru, uh, there is a there is a leader and there are disciples and the education centers around being with that you know uh, with a with a teacher and many of our you know in our religious scriptures always Uh, the the key person whom we worship are always considered as a teacher as a leader so even in your case i always talk to our teachers whether it is at the school level uh, teachers or the professors at the college level if uh, no if you, there are three professions that i feel which is very important afterwards not that other professions are not important but these are our fundamental professions which i feel one is the teacher you need a teacher for any profession whether you have to become a doctor engineer accountant or uh, you know even a good farmer you need to be a need to have a good teacher as a base foundation then the second one i would say uh, i would put both of them parallelly second and third that is uh, you know defense where we need to get a security of our country make sure that we are safe and a farmer so if farmers produce good fruits good produce without any major without any pesticide and if the teachers are able to instill good habits in the children you don't the doctors will not have too many jobs many of the sicknesses that we find these days it's a lifestyle sicknesses because of our habits because of our eating habits because of our exercise habits 
most of the things are around coming in you know, uh, finally boiling down to the uh, lifestyle diseases as we call it so if you have a good educator instilling habits and skills you are able to come out uh, at the end of the school education or if for that matter college education a good human being useful for the country useful for the area with a good skill set that he or she can use it with as an entrepreneur or as a person working in any organization i was just remembering um, when you were asking me this question i think somewhere in 2015 16 there was a skill study that was done and what was uh, telling i think it's around uh, uh, 75 percentage of the graduates are unemployed it did not tell about students who are failing all those who have passed graduation you are talking about them 75 percentage or 80 percentage i uh, don't remember exact date but it's around 75 to 80 percentage of them are completely unemployed so it is not lack of employment but the students who are coming out of the colleges are not employed what does it mean that means that they are not in a position to have that employability skills in them they may be very good uh, accountant very good knowledge about commerce they may be good in mathematics good, good in uh, science english languages but when they get into the job market the basic skill set life skills as i call it basic critical thinking analytical skills uh, collaborative skills all the skills are missing which is very important in today's uh, uh, work work ethics whether you are working in a company or uh, you are an entrepreneur you need all these skill set to have a progress in life so if the teachers at the school level do not focus on the skills as a big focus what are you going to give in the college the college cannot do much you know if in the last 12 years in the schooling system if a student has not re- uh, really learned the basic skill set what are you going to learn in the 3 years in the graduation or if you add to post graduation of 2 years in the 5 years of the you know college uh, education system majority of the students in the country do not progress after post so if you look at the 5 years what are the things that a college uh, institution can provide if that 12 to 14 years in the school education system have not done the basic things so the foundation is what the teacher can give i myself am an example of a teacher who can who has made my life in fact uh, I, in the book that i've written also i've mentioned his name it is because of him that uh, you know i'm here as a as an educator otherwise i would be in different profession different uh, stream he has made my life different it is a teacher who can make or a break a student's life and that is why it is called as a noble profession and i would put it as one of the noblest profession not because i am in the education sector even if i was not in the education sector i would still say it because any type of profession that is existing in this world at this time without a teacher you cannot learn it so i would summarize by saying that yes teacher is not only a noble profession it, it is only that teacher who can make or break someone's life so as you know many of the literature or even some films they say teachers are also one of the living gods parents are you know are, are, are you can't see god but you can see god in your parents you can see god in your teachers as well and teachers just like parents they are supposed to ensure there is a holistic development of the of the children in their schooling system parents are the first teachers as the children are born till they go into the school parents become the first set of teachers after that the teachers in the school system and you will find that you know when the children go into the school system you will also notice they consider teachers and they look up to the teachers and when they come back to the house and they and any of the parents try to talk about the teacher they will say no teacher told me this teacher told me that and sometimes uh, if parents also wants to correct it's difficult because teacher has already said that and teachers needs to also consider their profession is very important uh, they may have 20 years of experience 30 years of experience teaching the same students in the same class but as far as the students in the class is concerned they have only one year whether it is class 7 class 8 9 so any mistake that that is taught in the class where you are teaching you may be able to correct in the next year but that student do not have an opportunity to correct so whatever you teach whether it is good or bad that is for life for the students so that way it is much more important that teachers need to take care while coming into the classroom or interacting with the students in any forums that they need to be very clear what they are getting into it that's one reason where teachers have to be given a lot of professional development program 
even in national education policy 2020 talks about it at least 50 hours of uh, teacher training and professional development so i i would put in the, as a last statement to that question teachers definitely are a noble job it is they who can make or break life and uh, they have a big big part in the national uh, nation development in any country not just in our country any country teachers have a big role in the nation development okay so actually the sentence is saying that uh, the, the teacher can break and make the students life that's 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 how everything so okay sir so my next next question is uh, how can we prepare a student for the current and future world because we know that actually uh, the world is changing so rapidly uh, so the the things which we teach now will not be useful after 5 years and uh, after 10 years so so in this drastic changing world how we can prepare a student for the future you know that's something i i think all, all the educationists need to think through yes whatever we are teaching why it is going out of uh, out of date so to say after 5 years or 10 years because we are trying to pass on a content content will not be uh, will be outdated sooner or later if we look up, look back uh, into the history look back in the history we will find that uh, if you take the example of uh, automobile industry there is some example which i give in various uh, training programs initially there was you know bullock cart or horse cart if you look at uh, european countries mainly it was horse cart or maybe cart driven by animals so to say so all the employment was around that maybe looking after that particular cattle or horses so there is a employment around that area and making a cart there is an employment that area but when it got transformed into the automobile industry as we know it it was a slow process it was a slow process the trans it, the transition took lot of, lot of time and then there was a specialization on automobile engineers or mechanical engineers around that how to make engines you know various parts of the uh, automobiles but now with the automobile itself things are going to change you have because of this automobile just like uh, bullock cart had a driver even in uh, automobiles we have a driver a time is going to come that's going to be taken over by ai and uh, uh, electric vehicles then you don't need a driver so the whole uh, whole jobs that are around that is going in a moment so the transition from automobile industry to ai based uh, vehicles and electric vehicles it will take much less time so the uh, adaptability with which people move to the next set of job opportunities makes a lot of difference so Uh, adaptability is the key thing how we are going to go about it so if you are not able to bring that adaptability skills in your school education then you have lost it out what do you see in the last two years in a special way lockdown who are the people who have moved ahead who are the people who have lost out those people who have been able to adapt that skill set of adaptability resilience they are the ones who have progressed not the others who are so called Hundred uh, percentage graduates or graduates who have got hundred percentage gold medal, silver medal. They are the ones not who have progressed. The basic skill sets of adaptability, flexibility, creative thinking. These are the people who have progressed in life in this lockdown. Others have lost out, and many many of them have lost jobs as well. Even in a company, when they are trying to see, they have to lay off. Whom are they trying to lay off? They are trying to lay off those people who are not contributing to the whole system. who are not having the basic skill set so whether it is uh, employability features or you are being an entrepreneur look at all the entrepreneurs who have lost out who have started uh, that particular activity uh, at the dawn of uh, lockdown many of them are struggling but look at other startups who have started maybe around the same time they are thriving because they have been able to create uh, create something new they have looked at the opportunity they have looked at this challenge as an opportunity and transformed it so i would say that in all our school education system we need to focus on the skill set and not on the basic knowledge if you google you get all the knowledge that you want and if you compare that one in the bloom's taxonomy where all of us are aware of it that's just the last uh, the the first set the basic thing that is knowledge or remembering part of it the rest of the things are more important as you go up the triangular as it's depicted in bloom's taxonomy the the top one higher order thinking skills look at our school education system uh, there is a chapter taught in the classroom that means what are we trying to do the teacher is trying to do the knowledge transfer a little bit of understanding and maybe application and the students are supposed to go home and do the homeworks in analyzing and uh, uh, 
uh, evaluating and creating but you need to flip the learning let the students learn in the in the, in the at home the, the simple thing read the textbook and see what you understand and come back to the classroom to have a discussion so that they're able to apply the knowledge in new surroundings that's what we call as uh, analyzing part of it how they are able to compare how they are able to evaluate and make some judgments on their own and create something new so that opportunity of creating higher order thinking skill should happen in the classroom and so whatever be the type of uh, opportunity that are ahead the students will be able to adapt and we'll be able to manage the situation so that's why i call it as we need to prepare the students with the skills for life and not just mathematical knowledge or you know english language knowledge or science knowledge that i think i am i am a, i am a graduate in mathematics and science that does not mean that uh, i don't like history if i want to know more on history i can just google and i get all the information i want why do i need to for a graduation in history why do i need to go for a graduation in uh, you know economics or even for that mathematics those who have done arts and humanity and history why do they want to uh, if they want to know something on mathematics they can always google and find out now things have become more easier not just explanation there is a video explanation so many youtube channels are available explaining various concepts so in that scenario i feel we need to focus students on uh, preparing the students by the teachers both at the school level and the college level for their life that is the most important factor as far as i am concerned so uh, my next question is uh, very much related to the the previous one uh, what approaches uh, can be adopted to develop students beyond academics and make them mentally and physically strong because uh, i think the people Uh, need to uh, handle rejections and also they have to uh, learn the lifelong learning skills in them so you said lots of things in the in the previous uh, question uh, but any kind of methodology the teachers can easily adapt uh, or research on you have any suggestion on that whatever the activities that we do in the school it is a approach for education let's start from the entrance to the school or when they start from home when a student whether it is at the school level or the college level they start from home and then come to that institution educational institution and they go back to their place each and every activity can be a, an educational opportunity if you are looking from home the teacher along with the support of parents can talk about importance of hygiene which is very important in life so how they need to take care and you know prepare themselves to come to the educational institution and on the way importance of road safety safety during uh, the travel that's another important aspect that they need to inculcate early in life uh, one of the reasons when many of the especially in the cities the traffic is quite uh, you know erratic many accidents happen because people don't know how to cross the roads the the roads are crossed in a very bad manner uh, maybe the vehicles are not able to stop in time there's an accident happening so importance of road safety while traveling to the school and to and fro once they get into the school or the educational institution what is the type of discipline that they are getting into it if you look at you uh, know if you can compare the school to an any organization every organization has a start time and an end time right maybe some of the offices starts at 9 o'clock and end at 5 o'clock but not necessarily the new generation company they have a start time there is no end time it goes on and on and on but when you compare with a normal organization you will find just like a school starts at say 8:30 in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning and somewhere stops at 2:30 to 3 o'clock depending on your time zone some in the south maybe it starts at 9:30 and ends at 4 but in the north you know it's early start and early uh, ending of the school and just like in an organization there is a start time and an end time and in the school also every period is uh, segregated similarly you will find in the organization also every hour there is a kind of meetings deliverables to be completed and in the school what are you trying to do you say deliverables have to be completed a teacher has to complete uh, say economics or history this chapter has to be completed that's a deliverables for that particular teacher that day it's very much comparable to a normal organization and you look at some breaks are there in the school also so the school is preparing the whole children to into a world where normal system takes place now many of the Uh, many of the uh, no the speakers might also say our education system is bad it's preparing for babus maybe true because the education system is focusing on syllabus and not on the skill set and competency recently you will find uh, 
many assessment, national assessment survey by the national bodies that has been done. It's again coming on the competencies, fortunately. But there is a tinge of salt. We have to take it all this thing with a tinge of salt because again, it's boiling down to the syllabus completion. Unless and until we are able to uh, change the approach from syllabus completion to learning completion, we cannot really transform the system. Now, within the education, present education system, can we do that? Definitely, we can do that. So it all, it all, it always uh, from the point of you know, the approach. There are many other schools in the country where it is already following this approach, making sure the learning happens. Other many other majority of the school, what happens? They have completed the syllabus, but the learning is not complete. So what happens? It, the syllabus completion becomes like a checklist. Have you completed your syllabus? That is the wrong question. Have all the students learned in your class is the right question. So I personally believe that as a, as a person who has started my career as a teacher, I always believe that every student can learn. There is no so-called unintelligent or children who lack intelligence. It all needs, intelligence needs to be developed. The brain needs to be used and needs to be developed. Only then uh, children can use uh, that for a good purpose. So from the young age, you will notice the children are so talkative. They are very expressive. Once they start getting into the school, they lose out. Why? Because the welcoming situation in that particular school is only helping them to uh, no, suppress what they want to express. Are the school ready to uh, help the child to express? Otherwise, I just really, really don't understand the children who can speak the regional language of that language of that particular near that state or near that school. When they come into the school, they are not able to perform in that same language. What they don't know is how to read and write, but they know how to speak already. Why are we losing out? You look at some of the re recent reports that has come. They are not even able to speak. So there is a, it's a, the whole issue with the education system is not the system in itself. It's the approach in the system rather than the system. It's very easy to say we have to change the education system. To what? What are you going to change? How are you preparing? So if you're changing the system, what are you doing to prepare the teachers who are coming into this? So that leads me to the question of what are we doing into the pre-service and in-service training? May I talk to many of the teachers who are existing. There are a lot of training programs going on. They say it's boring and is useless. What is happening in the country, whether it is private schooling system or I don't know, maybe even the government school system, we are not bothered about what the teacher wants. What has happened to the teaching community at the, the, at the start of lockdown? There was absolutely no training given by anybody, but the teachers have turned around. The training programs started after eight months of lockdown, six eight months to eight months. So how did the teachers manage without any of this training? Because teachers have the basic skill set to manage education, manage children. But somehow we don't give that sufficient empowerment, whether it is a private schooling system or even public school education system. We don't give that empowerment to the teachers. We don't give that empowerment to the head of the school. Unless and until there is a leadership empowerment uh, you know, going down, decentralized, they are not going to. We cannot always uh, keep the uh, teachers and head of the schools to, you know, uh, with the implementation of a circular. You cannot uh, uh, getting into the operational or day-to-day -day activities of a schooling system. They know what to do. You need to give them guidance. So somehow we need to turn the triangle round and make sure the teachers who are the main pillars in a school education system need to be the priority, needs to come up, and not the people who are only making policies and not knowing the details. I'm not saying that policies are bad. You look at the national education policy, policies are fantastic. It has come out, I would say, very good policy. Even the previous policies were good. This uh, NEP 20 would have gone a little one more ahead because there is a focus on technology and there are various other uh, facets that has been added. But now how are we going to implement? That's where the situation comes. Uh, when they look at, uh, now when people outside the country, they look at India, where is it missing? It is in its implementation. Do we have a policy for everything? Yes, we have a policy for everything. Maybe something needs to be updated or upgraded, but there is no lack of policies or processes, but it's in its implementation. Whenever uh, teacher training has to happen, how it is happening. It comes as a checklist. And so teachers are not interested to attend the training. Even the trainers have to complete that training. Whether the teachers are enjoying or not, that's a different thing. Teachers are learning or not, that's a, nobody is asking that question. And how are we making this teacher training effective? Where is the measurement taking place? I have done a training. Is my training useful to the teachers? Have they learned something from my training and uh, uh, you know, 
uh, started applying into the classroom, have the students started improving because of my training? Where, where is that outcome evaluation that is going? We always look at, you know, if you look at any of the companies which are progressing, what do they do? These are the inputs that I'm giving. This is the process that I've established. What is my outcome? What is my output? And then what is the outcome? What is the change I've made? Have I got a return on investment properly? There's always that look is there. So in, when you transfer into the school education system, why are we missing on that? It's always input focused and not outcome focused. Or in some other people, they say, at least if you're able to get outputs, that's good enough. I'm going one step forward. We need to say that we should have an outcome focus for every activity that we do for the education system. If our education system is not properly run, the whole country is going to suffer. We are focusing on, okay, we need to increase the number of seats in the college because uh, there is a universal, universalization of a, a primary system or elementary system uh, or even to the school education level. So all these children need seats in the uh, colleges. So many of the colleges I see this year, they have increased the seats. What for? Do you have enough professors to teach them? Giving them seats is not enough. If you are not able to provide a quality education, What's the point in wasting the time of the person? Maybe that person can do some diploma or uh, you know, some other vocational education and start being a contributor to the economy of the country. And depending on the seat's availability, he or she can continue the education thereafter if it's required. Why all have to complete post-graduation? Has it become an order of the day or as a prestige issue? Our vocational education in the country is seen as second grade education. Why? Why are we having so many doctors and engineers who do not have a job, but they have become doctors and engineers? So is the education giving us the desired employment, the desired contribution to the economy of the society? So that is a kind of a question that we need to look at, you know, even from class nine onwards, where vocational education has become a focus uh, in the NDP 2020 as well. It's a good, another interesting part of uh, internship that has happened uh, in this policy that suggest, suggested but we have to really see how it's going to be operationalized. So while policies have been made well in the country, we need to see the approaches that has been mentioned in the policies are all good, nothing is wrong. For every, every policy, you can have a critic. I'm not getting into the critic of any policy at this time. I would like to see what is good in each of the policies. All the policies are good elements, good system, good approach. There's a good focus on skill set in this uh, existing uh, new, new education policy 2020. How are we transferring it? You will have a separate period for a life skill, which is again meaningless. Why are you focusing on one period life skill when you can improve the skill set in all the classroom? I remember one of the organizations in, initiated uh, one period in a week or two periods in a week, something called com com comprehension and uh, composition. What does it mean? You are focusing on comprehension and composition only in that period. So teachers were trying to finish the syllabus fast because why we need to work on the comprehension and composition. What I suggested to them in my one of the training is cut comprehension, just focus only on the composition class. Comprehension has to happen in every classroom, not in that particular classroom. So go and check the comprehension there. This composition, let it be a period for you know in, increasing the creativity of the students. Let them get, you know start. Uh, thinking of their own right, whatever they want on their own on the particular topic that has been given. The, some of the topics which I remember that has been given was, if I were a 100 rupee note, what will you do if I were a balloon? So get the creative juices in the children out, but the comprehension has to be focused in all issues. How are we teaching mathematics? Mathematics is, uh, is a subject which many of the students uh, get afraid of. Why, by the time they reach class five or class six, most of the students, either get frightened or they start you know, enjoying it after class six. So um, which stream the student has to take is already decided by class five. And it's all depends on the students, how they, the teachers who are teaching the mathematics there, not because mathematics is bad. The people who are teaching mathematics, the approach that is teaching us. I, I just give you an example of uh, you know, how that can be done. If I ask you a question, what is 20 plus 20? What will be your answer? Pardon? If I ask you a question of 20 plus 20, what will be the answer? 40? 40. Yes. That is how the normal teaching happens. But the moment as a teacher, mathematics teacher, I turned around the question. I need an answer 40. Tell me what are the questions that I need to ask to get an answer 40. Then there is no single answer. There are multiple answers. All the students start taking part. I have done this uh, example in various training. 
and all the principals, teachers, they start giving you so creative ideas. Those people who are not active, they suddenly become active in the training. Yes, that exactly happens in the class. The teacher can create interest with the syllabus. You don't need to dance around to create interest or sing song or have a lot of activity. You can continue creating interest in that particular mathematics class the way you take approach. And in this particular turning around the question, what am I trying to do as a mathematics teacher? I'm trying to improve their critical thinking skills, listening skills. Okay, that particular student has said this question is the uh, approach that you to give you an uh, answer of 40. So that means you are making each one listen to the other's perspective. It can be a source for value education. Yes. You don't need a separate value education class. So that is one of the curse in our society. Why we are saying, no, oh, this particular person do not have any value system because we have kept value system, value education system in a separate class in our system. It has not been integrated into the classrooms. Skill development has been a separate. Happiness curriculum has been separate class. Why, why can't we have a happiness throughout the uh, schooling time? Why we have to make it tough seven periods a day and eighth period happiness class? Do you think that will work out? So the approach is an integrated approach that we have to take. Uh, uh, NEP 2020 talks about uh, interdisciplinary approach. Yes. It's very important approach. Otherwise, we are thinking linearly. We have a left brain and right brain. It requires both, both sides to be developed. We need to have a balanced mind coming out of our schooling system or education system after higher education. We cannot have a person only looking at creativity without any logic. What's the point in being creative? I'm going to create a bridge, but I don't have a roads on both sides. What's the point of that creativity? So you need to have the basics, uh, you know, balanced approach there. And after that, there may be some maybe very highly creative minds. Some may be going into difference, but that's fine. All of us are unique. All of us have our own thinking and uh, line of uh, interest. And accordingly, we choose our profession and career. But not all people are able to choose a career of their liking is because of this particular reason. They don't know what to do. They have not got that direction uh, at the school level or maybe even at the college level. You will find also many people who have struggled from class nine onwards preparing for their medical entrance exam. They've taken MBBS after first year, second year, they lose out. They move out of it or they complete the MBBS and they say, let me go and do an MBA. Okay. okay. So this, this whole reason I will uh, you know, boil down to your question on the approach that is taken in the schooling system. The schooling system has produced a lot of wonders, a lot of good people. So it's not that we cannot. Somebody will say, in spite of our school education system, people have come up. Now, I will say that it is the education system. It all depends also on the student's part, also on the parent's part. Are we as parents putting pressure on the children? No, you have to become a doctor, an engineer, or a CA, or an IAS officer. Are we putting pressure on the children? Or are we looking at what they are interested in? So it, it takes, uh, no, there is a saying going on, going, you know, it's a proverb or a saying, as you say, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It's not one person. Parents are important, the society is important. What is society uh, doing in general? Is it a peer pressure? Peer pressure, not only in the classroom, it can be in the society. I have bought a car, BMW. Do you don't have a BMW? Okay, then the other person says, oh, I need to have a BMW. Okay. The neighbor has bought a TV. I need to buy a TV. So always there is a comparison. It's a wrong comparison going on. So what is the value system that is coming into? So if the school education system is able to give that particular skill set to the approaches, activity-based or project-based learning or skill-based approach, whichever the approach that can be taken, final output outcome should be a student who understands what is there and what is not there, is able to use the information in new areas for application, they're able to create something new, then the Bloom's taxonomy will be realized. Otherwise, Bloom's taxonomy will be limited to the four walls of the training room. Okay. So I think that's where I will end the answer to that question. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll continue on that topic because that's a topic which I yes, really yeah. love to talk about. My ne next question is uh, very much related to that, uh, that this particular uh, question. Uh, so what approaches should teachers adopt to develop the cognitive skill in the children? Because uh, you, I mean, I mean, I think, I think it's a, it's a very, um, I mean, interesting topic for you. Uh, so I think you know lots of things about that, this particular area. So, see, when we look at the cognitive uh, domain, again, we are coming back to the Bloom's taxonomy. 
So whenever we talk about community domain, we always end up talking about uh, you know, Bloom's taxonomy as such. Okay. So if I look at uh, no, what is the start off? There are lower order uh, thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. Start with remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So if all our approach, teaching approach, it's not only teaching approach, even the pre-service where the teachers are being taught in the B.Ed. colleges and M.Ed. colleges, even there they need to learn this aspect. What are we trying to teach in the remembering part in the education system, the improving the community? We're just trying to recall specific facts and information. Then you're going to the next level of understanding. You're able to grasp, uh, grasp the meaning of uh, all these uh, uh, knowledge that has been transferred to you in the classroom. And then you're looking whether the student is able to apply these information into a new situation or even similar situation. Then we'll say, okay, the basic uh, the apply, applying skills are given to the student. So these are two, three, what I would call it as more of lower order thinking skills. But then we need to push the students to the next level. Are the students able to do the analyzing part of it? Take part, take apart the known and you know, identify the relationship. What is the correlation between this? Compare and contrast. Then the next level of evaluating. Are we able to examine all the information that we have? Make some judgment based on the information, not, in, not uh, intuition. Somebody has told me this is right. So you are making a judgment. And that is also becoming a problem in the country, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, a, a, whether it's the institution, it's a, if there is a credible institution in the country, whatever that particular credible institution says, that becomes the factual matter. If there is a, a leader in the country, if that particular leader says, everybody says, okay, the leader has said. So that means all these people who says the leader has said, the basic evaluating skills are not there. Nobody goes to that information. So that is also the reason people tend to believe fake news. There's a lot of fake news coming you know, around the country in the web or in the WhatsApp or Facebook, in any of social media channel that we have. So the evaluating part is another higher order thinking skill. How the teachers are able to uh, get all your, you know, all the, uh, the teaching time, the classroom transaction, how are they able to get them to use the information and make judgment based on the facts and figures? Then how are you, how are the teachers pushing the students to be creative? What are you creating using this information? How are you able to create something new? These are the approaches that I feel if a teacher needs to improve the cognitive skills uh, among the uh, students in, the, in a class or in the colleges, they need to push up the ladder of, uh, from lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills. But if I look at uh, you know, uh, the cognitive domain or cognitive development, it's only a few things. There are so many other uh, factors that we can talk about when you are talking about assimilation, thinking, playing, concealing. There are so many other words associated with you know, the cognitive development. And definitely cognitive development is one of the basic things is required. Even in our book, we have classified uh, all the into five skill sets. And cognitive skill set is one, one of the uh, key skill set that we have uh, classified into. So the approach has to be uh, when we are looking at the uh, higher uh, uh, cognitive skills development, definitely we need to follow in letter and spirit the Bloom's taxonomy, and I think we should be able to get there easily. But most of the time, I feel teachers are overburdened with various other activities sometimes, and uh, they are under the pressure to complete the syllabus. Uh, and all the schools, whether it is private or public school system, they want to uh, save money, reduce the expenses. So sometimes they cut corners and the teachers have to bear the brunt for it. Mm -hmm. And so in the process, the teaching time or what we call as academic time with the students gets reduced. We also see that you know, some many, many times the teachers are being used for other, uh, the so-called non-schooling activities, whether it is uh, you know, preparing the census list or voter list or BPL survey, whatever it is. <clears throat> that is not their main role, but it has become one of the roles that teachers are performing in the country. There are so many other uh, uh, people in, in the villages, whether it is panchayat members or other ward members, why are they not going into many of this uh, uh, non-schooling activities that are thrust upon the teachers? Many of the schools, there is so much of teacher vacancy. I think it's about in the country, we have more than 4 lakh, we have 5 lakh teacher vacancy at this time. Why there is so many schools with so many teacher vacancies? So teachers are also under pressure. If a school is having uh, two or three teachers in one of the interior villages, and they have to manage a primary schools of five classes, that is class one to five. How are the teachers, two teachers going to manage five classes? Mm -hmm. Are they prepared for it? 
so schools are run tick list yes the school was functional but are the have the students learned so the approach has to be as a systemic change not just a change in the uh, just the classroom itself but that doesn't mean that we have to wait for the classroom i always talk to my teachers wherever i go why do you want to wait for a circular to tell you how to teach uh, so and so chapter do you want to a circular for that why are you waiting for that don't you know how to teach start teaching and make sure students are learning also that is the most important thing and we always you know there's so many un languages and words no children are left behind no child left behind there is an acronym also for that so similarly we tell the children make sure no children are left behind in your classroom otherwise it becomes a <coughs> added burden as they go up it is the transfer of less uh, no transfer of lack of learning that goes if in class 1 i have not picked up the basic competencies of class 1 when i go to class 2 the teachers in class 2 have to suffer just imagine if class 1 to class 9 that has happened the board class what we call as class 10 in india those teachers have to suffer <laughs> so that is why many of the so called secondary and senior secondary schools so much focus on class 9 to 12 but there is hardly any focus on class 1 to 8 you look at uh, many of the uh, many of the states where they have opened up most of the states have opened for class 9 to 12 why not class 1 to 8 so they say theek hai they they can learn they this is not a very important thing they are lower class in fact they are the ones needed most support because by the time they uh, move upwards they are coming with lack of learning similarly where are we having our best teachers why are we not having our best teachers at the primary level we need to have teachers at the primary level not at the secondary level because the foundation is not strong then no point in doing whatever you want to do just like a house if your foundation is not good what's the point in having a beautiful walls and a roof sooner or later it's going to crumble even schooling education system is like that that is why there is so much focus in the country by the government and other education system in the country sln foundational literacy and numeracy because people have realized without that nothing can happen without reading and writing and basic numeracy skill why are we passing on the children to the next level it's only we are only graduating the illiterate okay yes, it's a very contradictory term but that's what's happening okay mm-hmm. you are graduating the illiterate mm-hmm. so many of the students in the country as per the reports that have come out class 5 pass they have gone to class 8 in many of the state class 5 is a board exam class 8 is a board exam very unfortunate but how come after class 5 board exam when the survey happens in class 6 7 8 why are they not able to read even class 3 or class 5 textbook so that means we have graduated illiterates so definitely the teachers needs to look at the approach uh, from the point of each and every individual needs to be looked at it. if my teacher in when i was studying and we were three or four students who had a problem with the learning if my teacher had not looked at each of us as an individual some of us would not have been there where we are now maybe we are all in good career at this time and many of us would not have reached that career if not for that particular teacher so teacher needs to look at individually once the teacher tells the student how teachers are you know trying to care for their well being automatically the students will turn around and do whatever is required for their learning the connect between the teacher and student is very important i remember when i was in school education system we were connected to our teachers we were you know close to our teachers teachers were close to our parents we the disconnect that has happened there's a lot of disconnect between teacher student there's a lot of disconnect between teacher parents nobody has time so it it is in a happy coincidence of happy relationship that things grow whether it is in a family where there is happiness there is a lot of growth that happens similarly even in a child's life if there is no happiness around both at home and in the schooling system and there's a connect between the school and home you are not going to get the real education that's why there is always you know two three key pillars in school in education system there is a student there is a teacher and head of the school yeah professors and there is parents and community so the old proverb saying that it takes a village to raise a child it's not a it's not a meaningless statement it is a main statement in education system and i think uh, even uh, remember there is a, uh, a statement what uh, mahatma gandhi also said i just uh, want to read out what is really needed to make democracy function is not knowledge of facts but right education that is what our father of nation has said so if you don't give right education no matter what about the knowledge facts that you give is not going to help us so right education is a must if you want to have a thriving democracy thriving economy 
and uh, develop Ganesh. So approach has to be taken both at the school level and at the systemic level. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, so we found an interesting word in your uh, in your profile: neuro leadership. So how can teachers develop neuro leadership in the students? So then word was uh, yes. so. Would you explain a little bit about the neuro leadership? Okay. So neuro leadership, I think you must have seen it from a brain-based coaching certificate that I have got from NLP. You must have uh, looked at it. So neuro leadership started coming I think somewhere in 2006. I think it started by David Rock, who is the CEO of the Self Coaching System. So it started or uh, grew out of a need to understand um, more about how 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 we could uh, you know better leaders to be more effective in others and ourselves by engaging what what we call as you know brain tells us about being a human so how do we how make make it accessible to the leaders and others even when teachers as far as teachers students are concerned how we use science science of, you know science of brain so to say uh, in uh, developing and improving both self and students that is where neuroscience or neuro leadership can take place so there is a neuroscience behind this neuro leadership uh, theory that is being spoken of so what are the soft skills of professional development it can be into hard skills but in the science behind i i am also a coach i do coach many of the professionals at the at the senior level what is important is not to be solutions to take solutions so the whole coaching theory which is uh, behind uh, 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 which is based on the new leadership base how are we trying to get solutions from them most of the time we try to find it easy to give answers and so what happens you are uh, killing the curiosity among the students you ask the students okay what do you think is the reason behind this they start thinking so the brain starts getting activated the moment they start asking questions and give them time all of us are in a hurry and so we tend to give the answer okay this is the answer to this question let's go forward because i have to complete this method so i think uh, teachers if they get into this uh, neuro leadership uh, or neuroscience uh, methodology in their in their teaching classroom transaction it will definitely help them to not only improve themselves also improve uh, improve uh, students as such and there are various few things you know various um, areas that you can study under neuro leadership like decision making how are you able to improve the problem solving these are some of the critical skill set that are required for a students for life how are you able to regulate your emotions how are you able to do the collaboration with uh, others and influencing others how are you able to facilitate change so if you look at this you know four or five areas which i talked about under neuro leadership these are the basic skill set that student need to have if you are not able to uh, regulate your emotion outburst will be very common people will tend to get angry very quickly even simple thing as games what are we using games for in the school education system Uh, my school needs to get this award and that award, or it has to come at the district level and state level. But the games can teach you a lot of things. Sports can teach you a lot of things, and that is where one of the ways in which you can teach students how to accept failures. Mm-hmm. If I am having a basketball or volleyball match, of course one team will win, one team will lose. So the team which is winning, how are they accepting the winning? Are you, you know, are you degrading the loser? you need to also accept success how are we accepting success similarly the team which is failing they need to also accept failure how are we accepting failures is it saying that life's over it's a, it's a, it's the end of the world and that's the reason sometime you find some students who got 95 percentage coming to us why they couldn't get 100% imagine those students who have not got even got 90 percentage and you know happily going and party so we have we have created success as out of 100 how much do you get that is the success unfortunately it is but if you are able to bring back that particular aspect of uh, you know success uh, in the form of how much you are developed so there are some some students whom there is a nickname that goes in bookworms getting such students out so we need to get students developed holistically and not one particular Uh, level alone the approach has to be taken and also if you are able to focus uh, on various skill set i think that's the most important thing a school can provide by the teachers okay okay yes sir uh, the final one is uh, 
tell us a little bit about your book the skill edge and what motivated you to write a book like this okay uh, see when uh, my colleague and myself uh, was published, we were looking at uh, different aspects. In fact, when we came to working in one organization, both of us had some kind of ideas to write. But when we started discussing in one of the activities, then we realized we were we were having complementary chapters. So we decided to work together and uh, put it across the first part. Second is uh, we are strongly convinced that if we are able to have a skills approach at the school level, that is what makes a student better or worse. You will find those many good schools, I would say, whether it is the government system or in the private school, there are very good schools coming. In that particular schooling system, uh, if you like, look at the students coming out, you will find the student has a talent, student has a skill set. What are these schools uh, which are so-called good school or model school or you know, very good performance schools doing. A student is able to uh, get aware of their own skill set, aware of their own talent, and excel in. Most of the time, many of us are trying to reduce our weakness. But start working on your strength more and more. You will find the bubble of strength becomes bigger and bigger, and the weakness becomes so small. So same thing has to happen at the school level. And that we feel it has to be through a skill approach. So the content, is it important? Knowledge is it important? Yes. But that's not the only thing that a school can provide. School can provide the skills through that particular knowledge. So if you're teaching history, what are the skill set that you're giving to the students? That should be known not only by the students, also by the teachers, and not just making them by heart. When did India get independence? 1947. So how does it matter? If I'm able to remember the 1947, but the aspect of independence, how the independence came in, what are the sequence? So sequential skills that many of you IT professionals will speak about. It is coming out of your history classes, not your mathematics classes alone. Okay. So the sequencing that is being done, that is that the skill is coming on with this basic critical and analytical skill is not just coming in uh, mathematics class alone. So critiquing on this particular freedom struggle. Let's say, what are you trying to promote in that class? It is a skills of critical thinking, analytical thinking. Comparison, debate skills. So there are a lot of all the subjects. I'm not talking about, I gave one example in mathematics, I gave one example in history. So I take the science and <coughs> so arts and humanity class. Every subject that is taken, whether it is languages, science, arts, any subjects that are taught in the class has to be. So I always tell the teachers and the head of the school, please stop teaching mathematics, please. All the mathematics teacher gets worried. Then I make the next step and focus on the uh, skills, numerical skills, analytical skills, then automatically your mathematics class becomes interesting in this subject. I also tell the English teacher or language people, please stop teaching language. It's no use. But teach them linguistic skills, how to read, write, speak, and listen. So in the lower classes, I feel so saddened to hear that you know, some of the students are not able to read and write. So what are we doing there in that five years of uh, no, Two years, or if you're looking at the class size, five years in a normal system. Many of the private schools have one before class one, that means LKG, UKG, and so on. But I'm looking at normal government system one to five. What are we doing? Many of the private schools also have only one to five. Some of them have one to primary classes before that. So, what are we trying to achieve in that five or six or seven years in the primary schooling system? Mm -hmm. So, this is the inspiration that we realize we need to focus on the skills. And we, we are hoping that skills approach can be a movement. And we are happy that uh, we published the book in the uh, right time with the National Education Policy coming in, where we are speaking so much on importance of life skills uh, you know, in, a, in our school education system. So I think it is complementing uh, even our national education policy from that point of view. And uh, we have seen from our own experiences wherever we work, uh, when we take the skills approach, students become not only active, they become responsible. And there are various activities that we can undertake in a classroom, in a school, to make skills approach much more uh, stronger, much more stronger, and uh, which will result in the holistic development of students. I give an example how you know, clubs and how system can be done to improve student leadership. So even if you are talking about eco club or sports club, it's not to make sports as an important thing. But how are you promoting sports 
and the skills along with it. If you're having an eco club, how are you promoting ecological awareness, environmental awareness, along with it, what are the skills that's required? Maybe eco club is not very functional. Look at the civic sense that is happening in our country. There's so much of dirt if you move out of your house in the in the roadside or in the cities. Why it is so? Not everything is coming because uh, unwanted thing. Most of us little things. Maybe we throw the you know the bottle that we were drinking or uh, papers are thrown out. We don't care. The basic civic sense. Where is it coming from? It is coming from because lack of civic sense that has been instilled at the at the school level. So how are we instilling instilling the civic sense uh, at the school level? Are we keeping our school clean? The moment those type of things come into the student's life, when a student comes out of the college, automatically there will be a civic sense. I remember there is a story. I don't know whether that story is true or not, but I think it makes a lot of sense. One of the travelers went to Japan and was traveling in the country uh, by train. And as usual, what happens to our system in the train, in the railway station, or in the train, if you travel, <coughs> you are in one seat. If there is nobody sitting on the opposite seat, you tend to lift your leg and keep it on the seat on the other side because we want to stretch tired. So this Japanese saw this engine stretching the leg on the other side and started taking the leg and keeping on his lap and started massaging. It then said, why are you doing this? See, I understand that you might be tired, so you may need some help. But if you keep this leg on the seat, the seat gets spoiled. They have a sense of public property. Public property is of the public. It is not to be destroyed. But what happens in our system? If any injury comes, public property destruction is the first thing. Burn this bus, public transport, you know, all this straight transport buses or any public property that comes faster. So the civic sense. I think I've heard, uh, I think in Japan itself, if you want to have a strike, produce more. It's another way of striking. And you produce more than the whole cost comes down. So the government has to take you know, charge of the, uh, so it's not a destruction that is happening. For us, any form of protest comes into the, it is really a lack of civic sense. If there is a property, how can we think of destroying it? Unless, of course, it is a structural damage or something, yeah, you destroy it so that you can make a better structure. But if there is a normal monument, all structures going on, if we are not able to look at uh, roads, clean roads, why it's not clean? I'm sure all the uh, you know, sanitation workers are trying to clean. Why it is not clean? Because there is continuous dirtying going on. If you reduce our dirtying the streets, automatically sanitation workers will be more happy and they'll be able to make it more clean. So it is a lack of cleanliness in a, in a, in a road is not because sanitation workers or in the ward, whoever is in charge of this cleaning is not doing the job because it depends on how much it is coming in. So if if, if it's like a, if you want to you know fill up a glass of a glass with a glass of water, you if you pour full, you cannot pour more. But you keep keep an empty glass, you can pour more. So it's a similar thing that is happening in our streets. If any of the places that you look is dirty, most of the time if you observe for 10-15 minutes, you'll find somebody throwing the things on the other side. It may be even come from a BMW car or a limousine. Very surprising. They are supposed to be so-called educated, not necessarily. Just because you have a big car and you know, a big house doesn't mean that it is you are completely educated. Educated tells you what are you trying to do for your neighbor, what are you trying to do for your society, are you contributing? That is education. Are you a useful citizen? That is education. So it is in this particular aspect we wrote this book and trying to say that skills approach is more important to make a make a student a productive, useful citizen in the country, contributing to the economy as an entrepreneur or as a, as a good, employable citizen. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir, for being with us and sharing your views on education. Uh, I'm sure this discussion will benefit our discussion education community uh, and uh, wish you success in your future journey on a mission to transform each institution and system for a better world. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. It has been a pure discussion and a good, good discussion, I think. It, it has also enriched my thinking. While I was discussing with you, I was also seeing, oh, this is a new point that is coming up. So I was also an enriched person at the end of this discussion. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you sir thank you for the kind words okay so so adesh uh, you yes sir thank you so much sir on behalf of discuss education on the entire team of discuss education thank you so much for coming here and it was really a great session and we really hope you had a great time with us and i know for sure that this will definitely inspire and motivate educators to do more thank you so much once again and thank, thank you, you very much. yes sir thank you. thank you very much and take care and thanks to you too vastin you are a great host thank you so much okay thank you adesh and uh, thank you so much educators we really hope this will inspire you and uh, we will be back again with another eminent personality from the education world until then bye